Hi there, I have a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee that is uh, having some starting problems. Initially I thought it was my uh, crankshaft position sensor. I had uh, replaced it. Um, the old one actually was busted, but uh, that ended up not being the problem. Uh, it started fine, then I went to the store, and then when it came out, wouldn't start. Just, uh, you know, I, got, I have power, but it just wouldn't crank. You could hear something click, but then nothing. So, uh... I frustrated, did a bunch of different things trying to get that uh, position sensor, um, you know, wiggled around, still didn't work. So I ended up uh, getting it towed home. After doing some more troubleshooting, I was, uh, needed to check to make sure the solenoid was working fine. So I took a baseball bat, tapped on it, came around, things started right up. Very frustrating considering I had spent the towing money. But anyway, now I'm going to. Uh, go through the process of taking the starter off the motor and then uh, pulling the solenoid apart, cleaning it, seeing if I can get it to um, function without um, having to purchase a new one. So right now I'm looking at here at the engine, way down here, the uh, solenoid, you can see it there on the starter. So I've got to disconnect everything down there and uh, get that disassembled and then uh, once I have it apart then I'll um, get back on here and uh, go through the process of actually cleaning the solenoid. Okay here we are underneath the vehicle and I had already removed the green lead from the back of the uh, on the solenoid. I still have to take off the uh, where the power is connected right there. It looks like we have at least one bolt. And over here, let's see, light up in there. You can see that uh, right up here we have at least this bolt, possibly this one up here too. I'm not sure. I think it may be connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take off uh, this one, that one. And if it's still stuck, I'm going to go ahead and remove that one up there as well. And then uh, we'll see where we are from there. Okay, so now we have the uh, starter pulled off. It was just those two bolts, the two bottom bolts that we had saw. So it was not that third one at the top. So now I've got it off. Uh, looks like this particular type of uh, solenoid has the solder joints at the uh, each side of the connection. So I'm going to have to unsolder those uh, to get this thing apart. So I'm going to have to pull off this nut and then unsolder each of those so I can pull this cap off. Um, but I'm going to uh, take this a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this nut so that will pop off there. And then I'm going to actually pull this off of the starter so I don't have the bulk of the starter. So on this side, there's two uh, Phillips head uh, screws on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and take that apart, get it all assembled, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I was a little mistaken about this. Um, let's see, there we go. Got the video, so it's filming right. So this particular one's a little simple, simpler than the others. So inside here, you can see there's the spring, and the very center there is a is a uh, metal contact, and um, this whole thing is um, housed with coils. So when it's got current run to it, it takes this cylinder and it pulls it in. And so when it makes that contact is when it starts engaging the um, starter. So here on the starter, you see where this little plastic tab connects up into that tab. And so when, when this tab comes down, you can see here where it pulls that gear up. That's where it engages into the uh, um, the starter, the you know the uh, flywheel on the uh, on the crankshaft. So I believe that this is just a little corroded in here, or it's possible that I have the coils going bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up real good, then put some uh, dilithium grease or dielectric grease on it, and then uh, put it back together and see what we got. 
Okay, cleaning up the uh, inside of that cylinder all around. I cleaned up all the corrosion that was inside as well as the cylinder itself. I cleaned it real good. Then I put some of the uh, um, dielectric grease on, on it as well as inside. I believe when the plunger itself, it was like may have been getting stuck. So I made sure that the grease was allowing it to flow in and out very, very easily. Put it back on and things started right up. It's just running beautiful. So I believe that solenoid was definitely my issue. Don't think it uh, was a coil issue. So I think that uh, I did the repair, saved myself like 120 bucks instead of buying a one um, from an auto parts store. So uh, yeah, I'm good to go.